Hey guys, I got a quick uh, tarpon update slash report for you. Uh, got a couple days that I was able to get out. Um, winds coming from the north, so uh, gave me the opportunity to try out some of the Atlantic spots. Uh, Saturday, I headed up to uh, Cujo Key and launched out of the Blimp Road boat access here so you basically take us one there's blimp road just follow this road straight up until it basically dead ends and there's a boat nice boat ramp right at the end there um, this area I like to fish because uh, it's a good windy day spot because it's kind of a lot of different angles a lot of islands it's kind of a, a tighter channel uh, so it gives you a lot of different varieties of areas that you can fish and still be out of the wind. Uh, since the wind was coming from the north here, um, I wanted to head down to the bridge here and see if there was any tarpons ha hanging out and uh, seeing if anything was rolling, anything was biting. So launched there, cruised on down. On the way down, I noticed uh, there was about a half a dozen uh, mullet mud uh, flat areas around here so to get those uh, white sandy dusty areas popping up uh, netted some uh, nice little uh, mullet right off the bat uh, took some of those down uh, hit the bridge didn't really get anything so I decided to uh, fish these little fingers these little finger channels on the Atlantic side to see what was happening so I fished the main one here um, came back around, hit the flats, and then came back up this channel here. I uh, did quite a bit of trolling all in this open spot here because it's a pretty deep and wide area there. And then on the flip side, I hit the back side of it. Um, hit. I was out there long enough where I hit both sides of the tide, both the outgoing and the incoming. And uh, I saw absolutely nothing, no activity at all, nothing rolling, nothing jumping. So... Um, don't know what to say about that. I mean, it just doesn't look good for the short term. Uh, they could be there. You know, you just can't predict anything by just by sight, especially when you're looking at fish. But uh, usually when it's it's filling up, you can tell right away because you'll even though they're not biting, they'll be rolling and playing and jumping and stuff out there. So you'll see some sort of activity. But in that whole time frame, I saw absolutely nothing. So um, good to know. So I'll give it a, a couple more weeks uh, before I head on that way, just to, so I'm not wasting my time making that run. But there's other things that you could fish in the area. Like I said, is all these different cuts and angles here make it a nice place to get out of the wind fairly easily. And uh, that was that Saturday. And then today, um, again, the wind was coming out of the north. Um, it's another cold front. Not so cold, but it did drop about 8 degrees and it was rainy, so I'm not sure what that's going to do with the tarpon. That tends to flush them out uh, when that colder air hits, especially with the rains. Um, but anyways, my usual stomping grounds, uh, launching out of Geiger Key. I uh, wanted to hit uh, the Shark Key channel and the uh, outlet here to see what was happening. Um, I think I haven't been out here and probably coming on two weeks now. And uh, back then I, hadn't, I did the same thing as I, I just kind of spent some quality time there and saw absolutely nothing rolling, jumping, feeding or anything. So uh, like I said, I just gave it a couple weeks. So today was a good time to go out and check it out. Uh, even though it was rainy, uh, made the run out there. At the dock, I got lucky and I met in, uh, ran into one of the guides that fishes this area. Um, I see him a lot on the dock, so... He usually gives me the rundown of what's happening since that's all he does. I think he's in uh, the the beginning of his end season, so he's booked all the way through July every single day. He's got uh, people coming to fish for tarpon, and some uh, some he's got uh, two charters per day. So it's a very busy uh, time frame for him. And all he does is fish this Geiger Key area here day in and day out. So you know it's a very good area there. <clears throat> but anyways, he just said that uh, today was the one of the few days that he got to to fish live bait. Where usually um, he caters to the the uh, fly fishermen, um, but he said they're biting really well inside the channel, inside the basin here on a live pinfish. So that was good to know. Um, 
I still made my way out. Um, I caught the last hour or so of uh, outgoing tide, and um, I went to my normal low tide uh, bait spot, which is the mullet spot over here in the corner. Um, one toss, and I got four nice uh, 10 to 12 inch hog leg mullets. That was really good to see. And then there was about three to four boats already fishing this when I got there, and uh, makes it a little bit tight because everyone's fishing in this little spot right here on the outlet. So uh, normally I would have uh, just paddled around or motored around trolling that mullet, but because with the other boats anchored down, it was really well, it wasn't worthwhile to do that. So um, the technique I use a lot, um, especially before the motor. Um, even when I was just strictly paddling is that I anchored up right on this side here um, you'll see a channel marker right on the side there basically right next to that right along this edge here the west edge um, two reasons why one you 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 want to stick on one of the two side edges however on this one the boating the main boating channel veers to the right here so most of the boating traffic is in the center on the right hand side and then they veer off to the other channel marker on the right hand side here so on this left side you don't get any boat traffic so you tend to stay out of the way so I like that um, the reason why you pick the edges are you tend to want to go on the side that the wind is blowing because what happens is that pushes whatever current pushes the bait over that edge and then the fish just stack up on one side or the other and uh, just grab all the bait that comes over the side um, so I basically just dropped anchor here, uh, drifted a, a live mold around while it swam downstream from me. Then I would uh, got my uh, hoagie uh, 10 inch lure and on my spinning rod and I was just casting it up and letting it drift down and slowly retrieving it. Casting out, slowly letting it drift down and then slowly retrieving it and just working it that way. Um, I was happy to see that there were a couple of schools of... Uh, tarpon coming through so I was seeing uh, probably half a dozen times when I saw a school come up and they were boiling around or just coming up gulping for air a couple of them were definitely feeding they were attacking bait fish so that was always a good sign to know that uh, uh, that if they're feeding then you have a very good chance and you need to be ready and prepared um, I ended up getting one hook up and uh, it came unbuttoned um, I just missed it uh, and then sharks came in just got swarmed by sharks. I haven't seen so many sharks in a long time in this little pocket here. Nothing massive. I think the biggest one I saw was about an eight footer. Um, but just swarms of packs of twos and threes were coming around. They're circling around my kayak. They're just chasing stuff all over the place. So they were just making a muck of everything. And once they came in, it shut down everything. I didn't see a, a tarpon roll after that. Um, plus the tide changed and started to uh, do an incoming so that tends to shut things down as well um, but that was basically it um, in this situation um, I kind of want to go over just different techniques for fishing this area since I do it a lot and I recommend a lot of people to come this way especially the kayak people because it gives so many options that are uh, catered towards the strictly paddlers the people with the Hobie pedals and then if you've got a boat or with a motor um, so different techniques that will work so you can catch some fish. So like I was anchored up here You can see I had the live bait and then I'm also casting so that productivity is a lot better your efficiencies You're not just having one shot um, If you don't have an anchor, there's two things that you can do on the lower tides on this side is a man-made cut Where they've actually scraped it dug it so it drops off immediately. So this is a true flats up here um, at low tide, it's maybe an inch, two inches deep, where you, even on a regular kayak can't get through. It's so thin, you can, and it's a, a hard packed ground, so you could easily walkable. Um, get out of your kayak, tie yourself off to the kayak, or use your stake anchor or whatnot, and you can basically stand on the edge here and just cast out and just follow the the outgoing tide and just keep casting out like that. Um, the other thing is, is uh, if as long as you have some rope, um, right here, oops, right here and right here are the channel markers uh, for the outside of it, and just on this east side channel marker, maybe 20 feet above that to the north of it, is a uh, you'll see a PCB 
pipe sticking out. It's like a three or four inch diameter pipe sticking out white. Um, it's sitting at kind of like a 45 degree angle, but it's right on the edge there. And then if you got some rope, you can tie off to that. And then it'll, the current will just hold you right on that edge there. And then you can cast out in the most productive area, which is right behind those channel markers. Um, as you'll see more and more, that's the spot to be when the, the tarpon load up on an outgoing tide. The majority of the school will be just sitting in that pocket there. So if you can get there without any other boats, you'll be golden. Um, throw any type of swim baits, live bait, crabs, pinfish, mullet, um, any type of lures, the hoagies or anything out there, hard baits and you'll have a good chance at getting them there. Um, this side over here is a little bit um, rougher, so it's not you wouldn't be able to really stand on this side, uh, but you, if you have a, a stakeout anchor, you could stake out there and, and be pretty good. So those are kind of the way to fish the outlet. Um, as I do different types of techniques, I'll kind of have a video about different ways of fishing this, this area and catching tarp in here but that was just the uh, the one way I did it today so anyways uh, you can watch the video caught some bait uh, how I rigged the lures and uh, got that one little quick hookup and then the bunch of sharks chasing me away basically but anyways uh, have a good one oh and uh, tomorrow I'm gonna take a, a friend I met who's I'm teaching how to do the fishing the keys and stuff and uh, He's got a little flats boat, so I think I'm going to go take them shark fishing tomorrow and uh, see if we can kind of hammer these sharks that are out there. Um, so maybe I'll have a video on that. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.